What's up guys and welcome back to a Operator Mastery. Today I want to go over Buck and we're going to do it in a different format this time. First things first, I'm doing this as a live com and I'm not commentating over it. So is, this is um, all going to be real, real useful tips, you know. So uh, first of all, we're always going to go through the same things. We're going to go through the best loadout, all the weapons that he has. And then we're going to hop into a custom match so I can help both the beginner players and I want to kind of target more of advanced players while still being understandable to the newer players. I think that's really important is being able to, you know, make a video that can help both the new players and the very advanced players. So I think let's just get right into it. So at primary, you have the C8 uh, SFW or the CAMRS, which is a marksman rifle uh, DMR. I don't recommend using DMRs, um, especially with Buck. So the C8 is one of the best guns in the game if you're able to get that recoiled down. And then the pistol, the MK1 9mm, that's your only choice there, and a muzzle would be the way to go. I also always recommend, if you want to be suppressed sometimes and just get cam suppressed, then a suppressor is cool too. It doesn't really hurt the damage too much. Eight damage points, not like that's going to affect you too much in a gunfight. And the gadget, this is where it's changed a little bit. They added a new ability here with the Claymore, since they took out the grenades, which did indeed buff Buck or nerf Buck a little bit, but I don't think it changes him in the meta. He is still a very good operator in this meta, and you know, he probably will be always a good operator, being able to play vertically as good as he does. So the C8 is the weapon I would recommend, and I would go with a holographic, or at least I use a holographic, especially if you're on a stretch resolution, I would recommend a holographic. Plus, it's easier to control recoil compared to the ACOG due to the magnif magnification that the ACOG gives with the two and a half. So that kind of just screws up your ADS if you are on ACOG, and I think holographic is better if you're trying to do vertical gameplay, which is up or down, because you're going to be in more closer ranged uh, gunfights most of the time. And a muzzle break, I think a muzzle or flash is okay. I definitely want to use a compensator or a suppressor, or even, a, I think muzzle or flash hider is the way to go here. I use muzzle break. I think it's the best uh, on the, uh, Buck's weapon, but obviously that's personal preference, so do whatever you want. And this one might throw a few people off. I do a laser sight on Buck due to the skeleton key and due to my play style with Buck. I'm never holding tight angles with Buck in the most cases, so a laser sight does no harm to me. Honestly, the only time you shouldn't use a laser sight is when you're going to hold angles, which is most of the time. But with the Buck uh, weapon and the Buck play style that I use, and I'm going to show you guys uh, how I use it. The laser sight's actually beneficial, especially since you have a skeleton key, uh, which is a shotgun, and it kind of helps you know where that is going to be going. So I'm going to hop into a custom match here, and we're going to go right into game tips. So we're going to hop into Clubhouse. Uh, this is the loadout I'm rocking with, the one I suggested here, and I'm going to run stuns. Claymores can also be useful if you're sure that your team is not going to really help you out in most uh, situations. So um, that could kind of watch your flank if no one's roam clearing on your team. Especially if you're solo queuing, then Claymore's all right. But stun grenade for me here. And we're going to hop into a round here. And I think Clubhouse is probably the best map to learn vertical play in any situation, really. When you're droning it out, they're either going to be cash or basement first. I mean, I think that's in every single rank they do that. So um, we're going to play like they are downstairs first. So if they were downstairs, um, we would have spawned on the other side here so we're gonna go over here and get to kitchen because that's where you want to play if they're gonna go downstairs if you're trying to play vertically so um, going to kitchen obviously uh, you guys should know what this is if you are more advanced but I think this is still useful for everyone just to know what's going on so first things first this is where sight is so, you know, okay, so it's a site in this too. So it's basement. This whole floor is destructible in the basement. So you can sit above and get going, go, go to town with this. You have now 25 shotguns, or I think it's 26 because I just used two. It used to be 21, I believe, uh, before they took away his nades. So they kind of buffed him low key, but um, you just have to know what's destructible. This room, the whole church, is not. So um, this hall is. So where do people sit in this site? People are going to sit here, impact tricking, right? They're going to try to uh, open up a hole right here and uh, try to throw impacts. 
or over here, I guess, and try to throw impacts at this to decline the thermite or habana charges. So uh, that's one place that people are going to sit. They're going to sit around here or sit around here. So just knowing where people sit, some people sit back in this corner, especially in lower ranks. People love to just camp their asses in this corner here, but uh, that's not a top tier uh, ID right, idea right there to sit right there, unless if you're like a pulse or something. But let's go back above just to give an idea of what we are looking at here. So I'm going to open this up. I think this is a good idea. If you're playing Buck on any map, I think you should go into a custom match here on whatever map you're going to do. If you guys want me to do more maps, I can go into a full video on every single ranked pool map. It might be a long one, but uh, it definitely could be beneficial to you. So this is important to know. This whole hallway right here, all the way down. This is the hallway that is looking into their main hallway. So people are going to be running out of church most of the time. They're going to rotate through the two sites. So by creating a little hole right here and chilling out and just waiting for a cross, you can get easy free picks. But obviously this is more risky because you have bathroom, you have book bar, and you have the top stairs flank. So if your team has not roam cleared, I don't think I would just sit right here. But, uh, you know, it's always possible you can do the same thing inside though by going here and this right this is probably safer to do you can do it through kitchen wall and then this wall is never reinforced but the problem with this is they're mo more likely to look up here if you blow up this uh, but just by blowing up the floor and knowing what's underneath you and or above you I think is really important I think this is a great vertical play map especially because the two sites can really benefit from vertical play so from a kitchen standpoint this is where you're going to spend most of your round you're going to try to get this hatch open and you're going to try to go to work and there's a lot of things once the round is ending you know there's the hatch where you guys can just cover your planter if he just jumps down there and plants and there's also playing main stairs where you can come down here and push ahead down here but this is obviously a very common thing well, dropping hatch is a little more ballsy, in my opinion. Uh, but just know where people are. There's always going to be, not always, but like there is sometimes pulses playing right around here because they are going to sit there with their pulse scanner and try to see for you. So before you even walk in, you aren't going to want to just instantly run through before uh, testing the C4. You can do a little run out like that and just see if he C4s. But I would not recommend going in and shotgunning like I just did because now look what they can do. They can sit in a tight corner right here and watch the door they can watch this doorway so none of your team can come back in from this way they would have to come through this window over here now that's kind of a problem since there is now one way in and one way out and if you try to run out and someone's watching it boom they're gonna shoot your feet and maybe even kill you so that's something to keep in mind I do want to hop upstairs though just to get an idea of cash room and just some spots that you guys want to look at and once again, I recommend you go onto every single map that you want to play Buck on, which is should be every map if you're really considering Buck and learning this, just learn how to pull down on the recoil. It's actually pretty decent. If you want to learn Buck like that, I suggest you go on to your map, do what I'm doing here. I would go through a few rounds, set up a custom match, and just shoot holes, go downstairs, shoot the holes up, and you'll see where they end up. And that's where you should be playing as a buck. Same thing if they are vertical, right? Obviously, um, this room actually is breakable. This is the office room above uh, up here. But just knowing where stuff is. This obviously isn't a site. But just having this map knowledge, I think buck is a little more advanced just for that reason. You need to just know where stuff is. But that all it takes is going to a custom match and doing what I'm doing here, which is not a lot of work at all. This has taken me, what, five minutes as I'm explaining on a YouTube video. Uh, obviously, I knew where this stuff already was, but even if you didn't, you just go down there and shoot up, or you could even bring a sledge and just plow down the whole thing since you have more sledges than um, uh, buck charges or buck skeleton keys. But just knowing where everything is, right? You're going to get angles. You can get really good angles into here, especially if you get the hatch open. But even without the hatch open, right, you can, you can break... All of that. Hopefully that broke open. That's my last skeleton I had. I can shoot. There are a lot of good angles that you can get towards the doorway of rotations and such like that. Honestly, um, 
this is probably my favorite thing to do play this hallway like so because people always rotate between the two sites right so people are going to go from church to there and this is usually the way they do it sometimes there'll be a guy sprinting across this way so by opening up this this is probably the best way to do it but just by knowing uh this is a angle here that's probably useful as well and then p places people sit right like right here people like to sit in this cheeky corner some people like to sit deep in there holding an angle so you can come back more break open this from main stairs and kill them like that so you can you can bait them out here right by doing this and just shooting and then come up here and use your hole and then kill them this way that's just one way to think about it you just have to think like that when you're playing buck so i want to hop up to cash and show you guys um how that would work so let's go into another round here so now the we're just going to pretend like the bomb here is in cash i don't know if it actually is for this but uh there's a few ways to play this i think the main way here let's just go up there just to show you is we're gonna want to go play this little area or it's a little more over maybe yeah it's right here okay this is the wall so it's about you know on the stair beam that makes sense you know architecture things uh this is the beam here so it's gonna sit right on this beam level this is a good thing to know uh, the problem with this is people like to sit on the stair, these stairs. So um, that's your main that's your main concern is people holding this honestly godly angle spot or this godly anchor point here, where they can see top garage. Um, they can see whenever they rush in through the thermite hole, and they can come down here and kill anyone trying to do what I'm doing right here. So this was really good whenever you had nades because you could just nade this spot, which was awesome. But other than that, you know, now they can just chill up here with Wamai or Jaeger and just destroy you. Uh, even though you don't have nades in the first place, you could stun them all you want, right? Usually I see like a, uh, not a Jaeger playing there. It's usually an anchor type player. I see a Maestro playing there a lot of the time. But um, let's hop up here, go to site and just show where people like to sit. So obviously this is where the bandit tricker sits if they are bandit tricking if they're not guess what just you know buck this floor come on here of course and shoot the bandits and then your team has free entry to this now you have the wall open and you basically guarantee a round win especially if you do this in like the first minute all your team has to do is just hold angles um, onto these onto these common angles but you know where do people sit I think a lot of people like to set up shields sometimes, like right here. So break open that, see where that is. This is in the little round lounge room. A lot of people like to sit on the bomb. The bomb is usually right around here. So people like to sit in this corner, honestly. There's usually a rotation somewhere around here or a high spot so they can chill up here and watch the garage. Uh, where is it? It's right there. So if they open that and open up garage, then they have into the top part so people like to sit all up in here so by going here and seeing where this is this is of course in the stock room so this is usually where i enter from i go into the stock room i break open this corner i break open right around like here ish just to get into the doorway so they're going to be concerned trying to get into the door now um so right here over there and then I work my way into the bandit tricker because that will, you know, kind of determine the fate of the round if you can kill the bandit or if you can at least just destroy the two bandit charges or if there's a cade, you can, you know, see all the way up. The main thing you need to look out for is the stairs, but someone could potentially just be sitting here, right? Obviously this is possible, but for the most part, People like to play up there on the uh, little catwalk there. So, um, main thing you gotta look out for is red stairs, but obviously Rafter's going down. Uh, he could obviously kill you too if you're just chilling there. That's why this this spot, whenever you get to here, you're either blue or suck. You are gonna run up and just blah blah this, get the bandits and get out of here. You don't want to just play this, you know. Like this is not. You can get shot from there, and you can get shot once these guys run down the stairs. Once they realize what you're doing. There's obviously the roamers over here, which is um, you can't really avoid those ones. 
Uh, you can't roam clear and be a buck and do everything on the team, but there's only one door. All right, it's this door. So that's pretty easy to, you know, be aware of. Usually your team, I usually have one other teammate come down here with me and we could just destroy the whole floor, which obviously helps the team. And while the other part of the team is up here in the thermite hole. So once I go through here, I do my thing. I get the, um, I open up this whole thing. Usually I go from here all the way, all this, and then the, the hole, usually the re or the uh, rotation hole is usually around here. I think it's right there actually. And, um, break open that, break open the stock or the door into there, um, into from cash to construction. That's always good. Just have the angle on it. Just open it up. And wherever you see someone with a deployable shield, have your teammate ping him, live ping him, and then just blast right through here. You have 26 skeleton keys. Obviously, I use them all because I was trying to demonstrate this whole floor. I broke open that. I broke open that. It's just useless stuff. But, you know, go through here, buck this stuff, and then your main objective is this. Now, um, obviously, people will probably try to come blue but this is where I usually have my teammate come in if I'm working with someone I'll have him come here he just sets a claymore down at the bottom or if he just watches it for me or just chills somewhere over here watches the angle here then I could free rainly just go up here and go to work on the bandit charges or cades or mutes whatever it is and then we have free realm to the site so I know this is getting long but uh, this is how to play buck you have 26 skeleton keys you need to use a good amount of them at least half of them is usually what I would say and even when you don't need a buck it's still an operator you could bring just to you know get walls soft walls in general it doesn't have to be the way we're playing it right now but I would recommend you play vertically as a buck player hopefully this helps you out I hope that this helped out everyone Usually these are more beginner focused, but I want to make it so beginners can understand what I'm talking about. I'm trying to speak in like very easy words, vertical play, you know, just simple stuff like that. And, um, but also showing advanced players like spots like this. Some people don't know this. People that have played the game for years. Higher ranks obviously know this because this is a common thing to do. Go under. You could do this with Ash. You could do this with Sophia. You could do this with anyone. Break open this. But Buck is the best to do this with. Sledge is great and all, but um, he has nades, so you'd have to cook and then, then you know, cook it perfectly and land it right here, which is obviously not the easiest thing to do in most situations. But hopefully this helps um, everyone. I want to know if you guys like this operator mastery style more than my other types of operator mastery styles. I usually do, um, you know, just commentary and it's really beginner focused, but maybe this will help out the beginners and the more advanced players. Both of them can benefit from this and that would be obviously ideal if I could, if I could help out everyone that wants help here. And that comes to the channel. I want everyone to have value when they come to this channel, not just beginners, but I also want to, you know, help beginners out. That's been the goal with this channel from the start. So hopefully I'm doing that here. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video and hopefully you have a fantastic day.